Bible. It was fine. It was nice. I was happy about that. Amen. Amen. And then two weeks from that date, I was scheduled to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I say that. I was excited about that. And I remember as I stood in a line right back here, if I'm not mistaken, Brother Larry was right here looking in. Uh -huh. yeah. And everybody was crowded around. And I remember feeling the presence of angels circle me as I was waiting. Mm -hmm. And I remember I yeah. stood there as calmly as I could because I felt a fire, this burning sensation in the physical going up and down my body. And I didn't really know how to explain that. Yeah, come on. But I felt this fire. So when it's time for me to come, I stepped up to the steps, uh, the door was open, walked in, and my father was there in the pool waiting to receive me. Uh -huh. And when I stepped into that water, and my father held me, then he began to say whatever it was that he said. I felt such a comfort yeah. come over me. Amen. It was a blessed experience. Amen. And my father covered my face. He says, Son, I baptize you in the name of the Father, mm -hmm. the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And he submerged my body in that water. And in that moment, if I would have had a choice, I'd have never came out. Amen. All right, that was all right. the comfort and the power of God that came over me. And I had never been the same again. All right. So, yeah. Amen. I was 19 years old at that time. 19. Fresh out of high school, about to make my way to college, fresh. Yeah. I'm 32 years old today. All right, mm -hmm. And the Lord used that deacon to bring me to my senses. All right, amen. In a moment. So every time I see him, I have great affection, I have great honor, great respect for the man of God mm -hmm. because the Lord used him. All he right. didn't use an apostle, he didn't use a prophet. Didn't use a pastor or a teacher, didn't use an evangelist. Yeah. He used a brother with his grandmother that wanted to receive Jesus. And that sparked the rest of my life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when I tell you, we are not visitors. We're not. Amen. Right. Amen. We're not. And I thank God for home. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. So I give honor to my father, who is the under-shepherd of this house, Pastor yes. Lord Barney Mitchell. Bless I salute you, sir. God bless you, sir. To all of those that are in your respective places, from the deacons, yes. to those that serve the five-fold ministry, I bless you. And to the love of my life after Jesus Christ, my wife, Lady Kimberly, yes. I salute you, ma'am. Amen. For the rest of the diplomat family. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. So, with that being said, I'm here to minister to your souls. God has given me something specifically for this body. And I'm going to go into prayer right now for the Holy Spirit to prepare you for what says the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about it. So please, everyone stand to your feet. Let's get this physical nature riled up so we can get the spiritual man feel. Amen? Amen. Father God, in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ the righteous, we bless you. Lord God, I pray over your people now. I pray that you break every fallow ground. I pray, Lord God, that any, any hardship that is placed over the hearts of, the, of these people, Lord God, be broken by the anointing of your spirit. Heavenly Father, I request of you, Lord, to, to come in like a mighty rushing wind. I pray, Heavenly Father, for your spirit to come and to remain and minister to the people of this church and the people of God. Say amen. 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 May I have a seat. God bless you. All right, folks. If I had to give this anything, as far as the title goes, I call it going back to the first love. Amen? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, I was uh, putting up some laundry. Except that I accepted the invitation to come and minister here. Didn't know what to come with. So I was uh, putting up some laundry. And I looked in a mirror as I was passing it, and this is what the Lord gave me. Revelation chapter 2. Verses 1 through 7. So you all going to have to write this down. Um, I can pretty much guarantee you ain't going to be able to stick with me as I'm going. So just listen. Amen? Amen. Listen, please write these scriptures down so that you can meditate upon them because you're going to want to at the end of this day. Scripture reads, To the angel of the church in Ephesus. These are the words of him who Let's holds stand. the seven stars 
and the right hand. And the pastor said, let all stand. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, the scripture reads, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds. You are hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate, tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and you have found them to be false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Mm. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Yeah. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Verse 7 says, whoever has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Mm -hmm. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Let the church say amen. 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 So you will notice in your Christian walk that there's a tenure that you go through. There's seasons that, 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 that you go through. It's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day efforts of life, going back and forth between your family, church, and your places of employment. You're probably doing a great job establishing your life, day in, day out. Many of you believe that you have an acceptable balance in your life, mm -hmm. yet the Lord is displeased with your current status. All right. You have lost your zeal, your passion for the Lord and His work. And you have forgotten why you were called to his service. Forgotten your purpose. Some of you may be living in illusion. The Lord says this today, I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Now it's amazing to me how arrogant that we can become as human beings. How we can see 60, 70, 80 years of life and we feel like that we have re reached the epitome, the, the, the pinnacle of what it is of the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can hide about, uh, around past successes, past things that, that, have, that have garnered us awards. But some of you are living in an illusion. If you look at the definition of that, it says a deceptive appearance or an impression. Yeah. It's amazing how you can hear a woman of God, like the one behind me now. Bless you. you can feel energy. Mm -hmm. You can feel the zeal. I don't know those of you who know her personally or not, but the Bible says that a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. All right, all right. You can feel her energy. You can feel her excitement, her zeal, her passion. Mm -hmm. Many will spend the majority of their lives in the service of the Lord, and at some point, their labor will be rejected by him because they inadvertently lost their passion and purpose for Jesus. Mm. Who's been a member of this church five years? Please raise your hand. Sister Robinson, come on, mama. Ten years. Ten years. Pine Lawn Glen Echo Baptist Church. Fifteen. 20, 30, 40, 50, 40 years, 50, 60, I didn't think so, no, <laughs> 50, 50 years, wow. Imagine putting 50 years of something. Imagine putting 50 years of your time, your money, energy, focus into 50 years into something. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Now think about what that something is. Think about God being the focus of your 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, 5 years of service. Is it possible for you to lose your excitement, your passion, your zeal for God? All right. Now Jesus said, I hold this against you. I hold this against you. I have an art against you. This is what it is. You have forsaken your first love. You have forgotten why you do what you've been doing. Come on, sir. Jesus said that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He said that no man will ever see the Father except through him. So with that being said, and the things that he has lifted off of us, how is it that we can lose our zeal and our passion? No matter how many years we put into ministry or we put into a church, we put into our family, how can we lose our zeal for God? How can we lose our purpose and our passions about him? How is that possible? Matthew 7, 21 through 23 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to pause right there. These are the words of the living Savior. He says that not everyone that calls my name will see the kingdom of heaven, which means will not be saved from sin. But only the one who does the will of the Father mm -hmm. who is in heaven. Verse 22 says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, <coughs> did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons. And in your name perform many miracles. Jesus said that I will tell them plainly. He says plainly. There will be no parables. Come on now. There will be no deep thoughts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There will be no revelations to be had. He says I'm going to tell them plainly. I never knew you. Yeah. Mm. It's in the book. Away from me. You workers of iniquity. Other translations will say you workers of evildoers. If you look into the Hebraic uh, translation of that, he will say those who do unauthorized acts. Mm. You are unauthorized. I am unauthorized to sin against God. I'm unauthorized to live against him. I'm unauthorized to lose my zeal and passion for the Lord. Mm -hmm. We are unauthorized well. to live against God. Come on, sir. What are you willing to do to get back? Mm. What is your original motivation and purpose in Jesus? My brother, guitar player, what's your name? Mark. Mark, what has God blessed you with to do in your life? To serve in, in his service? So it's a guitar. Um, Good. Guitar. Music. Um, basically, almost everything that I do. Everything you do. So you're living out your purpose? Trying to. Trying to? Think about that. My sister, what has God called you to do? Keep in mind, in Jeremiah 29, 11, and I'm going to get back to you. I'm, this is a, 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 a workman's thing. I, you know, I don't like public speaking, so I need you to help me, okay? God is good. So, in Jeremiah 29, 11, the Bible says for, hallelujah, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. All right. Hallelujah. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. All right. Plans to prosper you. Yes. Plans to make your way straight and to not do you harm. Amen? Right. Amen. In that same book, he says, for you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Amen? Yes. So that tells us what? That before we, our mom and our dad, came together in the process of life that God has oh, ordained, yes. he said that I knew you, which means that we had a relationship with yes. God before we were formed in yes. our mother's womb. Yes. Uh, uh. Rightly divide the yes. word of God. Everyone, every soul here knew God before yes. we was in the womb. Yes. It's in his word. Before yes. you were formed in your mother's womb, God said, I knew you, which means yes. he had a thought of who you were, which yes. means there was an interaction. Yes. Amen. Say that. My sister, what has God called you to do in your life? He called me to go to seminary. Go to seminary. And to do what with that information? To preach to you. To preach the gospel. Are you preaching today? Well, I'm not yet, but I'm in school for it. So you're on the way. Yeah. May I ask you a personal question? Yeah. How old are you? I'm going somewhere, Mom. That's, that's 
Seventy. And Amen. look at fine with it. <laughs> Seventy years old. Hallelujah. Here's the point. Here's the point. Here's the point. It's never too late until it's too late. All right. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, it's sir. It's never too late until it's too late. That's right. The brother said basically everything he's doing, God has called him to do. Amen. Can you say that? Can you say that? Yeah. What has God called you to do in a time such as this? Look at Esther. Yeah. Look at the anointing God placed on her. Her people were about to face a genocide. Yes. And God used her uncle to come and talk to her. And he told that woman, he yes. said, listen, yes. Yes. God has put you in a position to free his people. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And he said this, and it is your time to do so. It is your time to do so because you've been called for a time such as this. Yes. Mm -hmm. He also said this, but if you do not rise up right. and do what God has called you to do, mm -hmm. it's okay. Because the Lord will raise somebody else up to Go save ahead. his people. Come on, sir. Uh -huh. So if you are not in position, if you're not seeking to be in position, it's cool. You're going to fade away like the dust. Because God is going to cut you down like the blades of grass. It's in his word. And what happens when you cut off dead? New life is born. Amen. To take up the mantle that you were supposed to take. Esther heeded the warning. She heeded the warning, got into position, and in result of it, her people were saved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Esther was an, an act, a vision of Jesus Christ. Come on, sir. Come yes. on. Yes. Jeremiah 29, 11. The Lord says, for I know the plans I have for you. Yes. I dare say an individual that has lost their zeal for God, their passion for God, they're not walking in their anointing. Say anointing. Anointing. What's your anointing? This brother plays a guitar. This sister's been called to preach. And it's amazing to me how we can reach our 60, 70, 80 years old and we're looking to retire and go out the back door right, to live out the rest of our glory days. But if you look in the scriptures, some of the key note individuals didn't start ministry till they hit their 70s. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Abraham. That's right, first one. Look at these individuals. Moses was in his 40s when the Lord called him to ministry. Yeah. Think about these things. This isn't a useful game. This is a game that for anybody that is willing to do what God has called them to do with the anointing that he has placed on their lives before you were formed in your mother's womb. And the church said, Amen. Amen. How many of you believe what I'm saying to Amen. you today? Yes. Some people need resumes. My resume is such. I have a degree in biblical theology. Go ahead. I graduated in 2014. Uh -huh. In 2010, I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Right. With evidence of speaking in tongues. Yeah. I pastored, I've been a pastor since 2013. Uh -huh. And I'm telling you everything, what I'm telling you now, that my call in life is not fulfilled unless I am walking and operating in the anointing of God. Amen. And if God says that he has no respecter of person, person if that is the truth, if God said that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, if he is the truth, then what I say is the truth. And when God said he has no respecter of person, which means he has no favorites, he places none above the other. So if that is true for me, it most certainly is true for you. All right, all right. Our zeal mm -hmm. for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise and worship can go forth and there'll be no response from you. Why? Because you have turned away from All your right, first love. Right, mm -hmm. right. It's easy to come into the presence of God's people and know who has spent time with him in the secret place. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yes. It's easy. Amen. Right. Yes. Even those of you that are introverted means that you 
are a calm, relaxed individual that, that, that you're not really outspoken and things of that nature. I'm telling you that the Spirit of God surpasses your mentality and who you are. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2 that when it was the day of Pentecost, yes, the Bible said that they all gathered and were on one accord. They yes. began to pray. Yes. Our Father who art in heaven, yes. they began to pray the prayer that Jesus gave unto them. And then when yes. they were doing that, the Bible said the power of God came yes. from yes. heaven and yes. filled that room like a mighty rushing wind. Yes. And at that time, all these people yes. were baptized in the fire yes. of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible said that they began to all speak in other tongues as the power of God gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What an awesome thing. God wants to do that for us every time we gather in his name. Yes. He said, well, there are two or three gathered in my name. I am. I am in the midst. Yes. And surely I tell you all, yes. if Jesus Christ is in the midst of this yes. body of people, how can I we am. not? Be on fire for him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, he Hallelujah. Is. Yes, he is. Yes, Lord, thank you. Will these dry bones live? All right, now. Mm -hmm. Wow. Come on. When you operate in the Holy Ghost, you can feel when people are receiving of the Lord or when they reject the man of God. Yeah. Don't All think right. that you are undercover. All right, hey. All right now. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit, God said that his word will lead and guide us into all truth. All right. He searches our soul. The Bible says that he, that the Holy Spirit is before God and he's interceding for us. Yes, and a yes. lot of you, hallelujah, yes, there's a lot of us in here today that are angry with God because prayers have been gone unanswered. But what you don't know, and this is from the Lord, Come is on. that the Holy Spirit has blocked those prayers from reaching his thrones because you know not what you pray for. Ah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. That will only bless those who receive that who is applicable uh -huh. to. Wow. Well. Not hallelujah. Yes. That's right. The spiritual fervor of the Lord comes through his word. Yes. It comes through a relationship with yes. him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Where is your passion? Where is your zeal? Uh -huh. Is your passion and zeal for those things that are not of God? All right. Mm. Now. Could that be why you can come into his house and not Worship and praise him. Yeah. Come on, sir. And understand that yeah. you cannot worship the Lord if you cannot praise him. That's like trying right. to give a, an offering without giving a tithe. It don't work that way. <laughs> oh. Oh, God calls for your I don't pass, I don't know. I feel the Lord Come on, leading sir. me this way. Go ahead. How is it that you can give a, a, an offering unto God 